Today, we're going to show how we can predict the forces on a body, not by using the fluid properties near the body, but by using properties far away. Uh, typically, when we think about uh, finding forces, lift and drag or whatever, we do an integration around the body. That can be pretty challenging. For example, especially in drag, if you think about a streamlined shape like this, that uh, as I'm looking at forces that are acting, say, uh, normal to the body and comparing them to ones on the back end, lift is usually not too hard, but to get drag, I have to get a very fine discretization because the projected area is so small, right? So if it's too coarse here, I'm canceling forces on this side with this side and they're very small areas. So it can be very difficult sometimes to um, estimate things like drag, especially uh, on the body. So that motivates one of the reasons why we might want to use um, far field properties. We'll also do this in a way today that uh, we'll just show how we can apply um, a body inside of a control volume. So let me just give you a picture here. Here's an example. I've got a domain on the outside, a control volume. In this case, it looks circular. It doesn't really matter what the shape is. Um, but I have a body inside of that control volume. And remember, all the equations that we derived, right? the mass balance, momentum balance, those equations, those were for a fluid. And so it's not really clear what to do if there's a body inside the fluid. As we'll see shortly, this is not you know, a big deal. But to be rigorous, we're going to create a control volume so that there's only fluid inside our control volume. So what I'm going to do is we have the control volume. We're going to take a small cut inside the control volume. And then the control volume is going to wrap tightly around this body. And then it's going to have the other side to connect is going to have another cut. It's just an infinitesimal distance away from the last and then continue onward. All right. So uh, if you were to draw the outward normal on the control volume, it would be like this, right? This is outward. And as I come along the surface, it's outward. And then it's coming around the body like this. And I'm on the bottom side coming around. And on the bottom side of the cut, it's pointing like this. And right, and then I continue along like so. So in other words, if I'm on the inside of this volume, I'm here, 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 here. Everything inside of this volume is fluid. There is no solid body in this fluid, so there's no ambiguity that uh, how will I, you know, treat my mass and momentum equations, right? Because there's only fluid. There's no solid. We've specifically created this so that if you took this body, right, and you kind of unwrapped it around, there's only fluid on the interior. Okay, so that's the picture. Again, the motivation there was just so that we could make sure that we're okay applying our equations with only fluid on the interior. For convenience, we're going to call this control surface the outer control surface, the one that wraps just around the body, the inner, and then the cut will represent both of these, right? The cut that goes towards the body and the other cut that comes outward. All right, so let's write down my equations. Uh, we'll do the um, momentum balance that we derived previously. And yeah, just to refresh our memories, it looks something like this. I have uh, integral of rho v uh, dv, right? I'm integrating over the volume, uh, plus an integral of rho v times v dot dA. Um, we'll just do it how I did it last time, dA. And that's going to equal my forces. So I've got the integral of pressure plus my shear stress stress tensor, and that's it. Those integrals over area. And for this problem, we're going to consider a steady problem. So this time derivative goes to zero. So in other words, let's say it's an airplane and a steady state, like in the cruise configuration or whatever. So we won't consider any uh, dynamics here. Just to, Well, there's dynamic, but it's a steady condition. All right, so all the remaining integrals are with respect to these control surfaces. So I can bring it all under one integral. So this says the integral over the control surface of rho v. Um, and well, let me do it this way. Actually, I'll just leave it like that's fine. V dot dA minus P plus, uh, yeah, actually, let me break it up first. Let me be clear here. So just 
so we can pull out the dA. I'm going to write dA, this vector, as the magnitude dA, and then we'll use n hat to represent the direction, right? That's just this, this arrow here. This is n hat. It's pointing normal, and by convention, a positive is going out, out of the volume. OK, so with that, I can write the integral like this. It's rho v times v dot n hat, and I'm pulling out the dA out of this whole thing, uh, minus p n hat plus tau dot n hat, and all of that is integrated over some cross-sectional area equals zero. So actually, I messed up my signs, right? So I was bringing all these uh, terms over here over to the left side here. So this is a plus, and this is a minus. OK. And I have three uh, surfaces. I've got an outer, the inner, and the cut. So I can break up this integral into three pieces, one over the inner, one over the outer, and one over the cut surface. And just to be super explicit, it's going to be a little bit tedious. I'm just going to write all of those terms out. So uh, I guess it doesn't really matter the order here. Let's just say, let's go over the outer. And it's going to be rho v v dot n hat plus p n hat minus tau dot n hat dA plus one of the great over the cut of rho v v dot n hat plus p n hat minus tau n hat dA plus the integral over the inner, over the body of rho v v dot n hat plus p n hat minus tau n hat dA. All of that equals zero. Okay, so I've got a bunch of terms here. You can think of, say, nine different terms. Sorry, these ones here. And uh, it would be a good thing for you to think about which of these terms are zero or which terms do we know something about, right? So it might be helpful to pause the video so you can think about this for a little bit. Uh, what do we know already about this problem? So what terms can we eliminate? Well, um, one thing we can do is that we know at the body, right over this inner control surface, right over the body, that no velocity can go through the body. Right? This is the no flow through condition. So the V dot N hat on the inner surface is zero. So in other words, um, this term here is zero. Okay. Uh, another thing we know is that on this cut surface, right, this one, remember that we do an integral here and then we do the same one that's just right on the other side. But notice that uh, the normal changes direction as I go from one side to the other. So they point in opposite directions. So this n hat is going to be opposite. But all the other quantities, right, density, velocity, pressure, velocity gradients, and all, all so on, they're all continuous. So if I go just above the cut to just below, uh, my pressure is the same. My velocity is the same. But my normal has changed direction. So when I integrate over one side, I don't know what that number is, but I know that when I go back, it's going to exactly cancel. So this whole, oops, this whole term here is zero. Um, let's see. The other thing I know is that on my outer surface, these shear stresses should be negligible. Right? These are the shear stresses uh, normal to the outside. So they're significant on the body, right? That's going to be normal to the body, but these are now normal to a control volume. So outside here, first of all, I shouldn't have very many shear stresses. I'm far away from any body. Um, and even if I do, even if I'm somewhat close or even in a wake, right, the shear stresses that are normal to that control surface, as long, especially as my control volume is going to come across the wake, uh, they're going to be much, much smaller. So that term is, is gone. This term may be gone, right? If I'm far enough away, especially uh, if this is an unconfined case, right? Like I'm, I'm talking about the airplane and the atmosphere, then that term is generally going to be zero too. My pressure is going to be just atmospheric. If it's on the other hand, like in a wind tunnel or a confined space, right? Where the pressure is going to be uh, modified on the boundaries by the presence of a wall, I need to retain that term. So I'm going to keep it for now. The other thing we know something about though, is that uh, let's look at these two terms here. This is integrating my pressure and shear stresses along the surface of the body. 
And that is the force. That's the force that I'm interested in. Like what's the force that the fluid produces on the body? So I have to be a little careful here on the sign. Um, the thing is that the, uh, um, the normal force, if we look at how it goes, right? Because this is going out and we come around, the normal force that's going out for this kind of weird distorted control volume we made points into the body. But by convention, when we're thinking about the perspective of the body, the normal points out. So there's kind of a negative sign that's introduced. But that negative sign gets canceled with a second negative sign because these governing equations are asking about the force on the fluid. But you know, as from the engineering perspective, we generally care about what's the force the fluid produces on the body. So the forces that we care about introduce another negative sign. Uh, the upshot is those cancel. And then this whole integral right here, that is the body force that we're after. So notice that everything canceled out and all we're left with is this stuff here and potentially not even that. Um, so we can write that out now. Uh, let's see. So um, I have to move this stuff to the other side of the equation. So it'll be a negative sign. So I get that my body force is negative, the integral over some outer control volume of rho V times B dot N hat and potentially plus the pressure term. Again, that one goes away for many cases when it's unconfined uh, and that's it, right? So uh, this is kind of a remarkable result actually. Oops, I shouldn't have cut that off. Um, it's kind of a remarkable, remarkable result, which is saying that if I want to estimate the forces and say lift and drag on this vehicle, this airplane or whatever, I don't actually need to know anything about the shape of the vehicle or what's happening nearby, what the pressures are on the surface. All I need to know is I can create some control volume. And I, and I didn't say anything about what the shape is, it could be whatever I want, it could be a rectangle, you know, cube type thing, a sphere, whatever. All I need to know is what the velocity and pressure is on this outside. And that can be very convenient. This is gonna be something that we'll use a lot for some of our theoretical results, but it also has practical usage, especially for something like an open section wind tunnel. Uh, I can put a, um, I know my conditions upstream, right? My inflow conditions, and I can put, you know, some sort of uh, uh, a wake uh, rake or something, right? Something where I'm, I'm, I'm measuring velocities uh, downstream. And in that case, when it's unconfined, I don't even have the pressure term. So all I need is velocities. Uh, I can, and if it's incompressible, I know density. So I just need to figure out my velocities downstream. So I could draw that. I right, so I've got this body here and I know my upstream conditions. And let's say this is my control volume. And then downstream, all I got to do is figure out what the velocity is there. So let's say I've got some sort of velocity deficit you know, like this. That's all I have to measure. And if I do that, I can get a good estimate for drag, for example, on this body and potentially do that much more accurately than I could if I was trying to, you know, put pressure taps and do an integral there. As, as we've discussed, you actually need a lot of discretization, which can be really hard, something like a pressure tap, right? Uh, maybe a force balance from a better way. This will also be useful computationally, which is really our focus here in this class. Uh, this will be a basis of some of the theories that we'll use where uh, later in the semester, for example, we'll wanna estimate the drag, particularly the induced drag on, a, on an airplane or wing or lifting body or whatever. And we'll find that it can be more accurate if we go down here to the far field and, and look at what the velocity distribution looks like instead of trying to resolve uh, velocities on the body and do it a near field integral. Okay, so uh, again, note, well, not again, but note that this is a vector equation. The initial ones were momentum equations, 3D. So uh, potentially I can get all three forces, right? But this is often, like I said, particularly useful for things like drag on these aerodynamic shapes that are hard to get uh, in a more traditional manner. All right, that's it for today. We're gonna start talking about potential flow next time.